Right, well, good Sunday morning. Good to morning. You. Hi, it's Carol. great to be with you. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I am. I am wonderful. We're, we're trying to figure out the timing of things. So, so we found out that sometimes when we start, maybe the the live stream hasn't fully started, and so yes. we heard that we were just talking about taco ingredients one time, and which sounds like us. Yes, yeah, I mean, that doesn't <laughs> sound does. unusual at all for <laughs> us to be all. talking about taco. We ingredients. like taco ingredients. I love taco ingredients. <laughs> Yeah. So, and Sunday well, nights are always for tacos they are, they or are for tacos. nachos, I guess, is more. Yes, yes it, yeah. it is more. No, yeah. I need siete. Siete. Siete, yes. Yeah, their um, almond flour tortillas have become my favorite thing. So good. I'm They're good. good with breakfast burritos. <laughs> They're good. Let me tell you all the ways I use them. You can make them into a tostada. <laughs> Do you know, growing up, I, and not, so growing up, we used to do, um, for a treat, we'd go to a Mexican food restaurant and we would just get the tortillas, mm -hmm. like hot tortillas, and we'd put melted butter on them and roll them up. Oh, I, still. When I was in college, yes, we would take extra packets from Taco Bell of their so sauce. <laughs> you stole from Taco we, Bell. Well, you know, they give you a bunch, so we took them home. Okay. And um, we would get flour tortillas and do that, put butter on it, heat it up, and then just put like, hot sauce on it and roll it up and eat it. And it was, I mean, sometimes good. that was a meal. I mean, it was college. Yeah. I never got into ramen in college. Yeah, me neither. But I, my did, favorite thing. I did a lot of other things. We'd do chocolate chip cookies and do the butter flakes like out of the can <laughs> and then put them in the microwave. They're so good. Anyway, we're glad that you're here on yes. Sunday morning to yes. talk about our <laughs> to not eat, talk about food always patterns and uh, what a lot going on in the life of the church. It's October 4th. October. How did we get here? I don't know, but, but here it is. Here it is. And, and it's World Communion Sunday, which yeah. in some ways, maybe talking about a meal is kind of appropriate for mm -hmm. this, that as all around the world today, Christians are coming to the table and we're going to be doing the same thing and how incredible that is. And to know that God's table is open and is inviting and, um, that our brothers and sisters of all nations and tribes are joining together. And I'm excited about this. Yeah, that's be That's a beautiful way to think about it. Yeah. it. I think it was Bonhoeffer and life together. who said there was three tables, right? Uh -huh. There was the, the meal table that was regular. And then there was the communion table that we shared. And then the marriage supper of the lamb. Right. So this is one of those high and holy days. And, and if you haven't uh, signed up for communion yet, it's not too late. We'd love to see you, whether you drive in today. It's, I think we're going to be in the parking lot from 1230 to 2 if you'd like to come get communion elements. Or if you'd like to be, be right here in the sanctuary. And I yes. think that starts at, at two, 2. I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you come and would like to come in before that, one of us would be more than happy to come in and make sure you're served. Um, but yeah, at 2 o'clock, anybody who would like to come um, we prefer you come in the narthex doors and up the stairs if you can, and we'll greet you and make sure that um, there's space um, available. If not, you can come into the sanctuary and pray until there's room to come and stand or kneel and receive the elements. But we want to make sure that we're still following protocol as far as social distancing goes and being safe. But we also want people to feel very comfortable in coming and being in our sanctuary and um, being able to take the, the elements there. And so, um, and then if you've driven through at five tonight, we'll go live again and be able to take together as, um, as we've done in the past. And that's really important because the, the, the elements are, are blessed in the service, but the service doesn't end until we, we actually take the elements together all at once. And, right. and we'll do that um, on the online service. So, well, I am, uh, I'm excited about today. The first Sundays of the month have become so special uh, to me as we get to see a lot of folks and hopefully we'll be able to, to see you uh, today. And as we begin worship, let's prepare our hearts. I, I, I truly believe that God has something for every one of us. And I think the key is for us to open our hearts so that we might experience the fullness of God's love and to be able to, uh, to walk in his will. So let's begin worship.
Well, let me welcome you to the downtown campus of First United Methodist Church. I am so excited that you are here this morning as we worship together. It is the first Sunday in October, which has a lot of different meanings. For us, it is a celebration of communion, and we will do this as a part of a worldwide communion Sunday. So let me invite you to open your hearts, open your minds. It's not an accident that any of us are here as we begin to worship the Lord together. Come, thou fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of proudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy Join me now in the call to worship. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Oh, will you join me in prayer, please? Holy God, on this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Amen. Now will you join me in the affirmation of faith? Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be.
Well, hey, good morning. If you are a kid, I want to talk with you for just one second. Just one second. It won't take long. Okay, so come on in close. Now, I'm sitting on the front steps of our church, if you couldn't tell. And uh, there's a lot. There's a lot going on out here. There's cars zooming, trucks zooming, buses. Uh, people are walking down the street. Um, I'm sitting out here because I want to tell you that you are a blessing, not just in the church building, not just on Sunday mornings, but um, even out here in the world. You are a blessing um, when you're at home, at school, anywhere that you may go. And on every day of the week, you are a blessing. God has given each and every one of you um, special gifts to share with others and has created you in a unique way and given you a special personality that is special to you. So share that with others. Go and be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Uh, Holy Father, I thank you for these kids. Lord, thank you for the many unique and special ways that you have created each and every one of us and the unique and special gifts that you have given each and every one of us. Lord, help us to use them to bless others. In, this, in your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, I will see you later. Go and be a blessing. Bye.
Let me invite you this morning for us to join our hearts together as we read the scripture today. It comes to us from the 21st chapter in Matthew, beginning in the 33rd verse. Now listen to another story, Jesus said. A certain landowner, landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the grape, grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his son coming, they said to one another, Here comes the heir of this estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, What do you think he will do with these farmers? The religious leaders replied, He will pick the wicked men He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Then Jesus asked them, didn't you ever read this in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone it falls on. When the leading priest and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was telling the story against them, for they were the wicked farmers. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and most holy Lord, uh, we give you thanks and praise for this day that you have created. And we ask that you would continue to speak to us as you already have in this service. Give us ears to hear and hearts that would be courageous to follow you wherever it is you're calling us this day. For it is in your name we pray. Amen and amen. I feel like I need to begin the sermon by saying, previously from the temple steps, uh, because this is really a continuation of, of what we, uh, we saw and heard and experienced last week, that Jesus is still in the temple. He's still talking to the religious leaders and still trying to help them understand how they have fallen way short of what God wanted for them. And so he tells them this other parable. And, and really, there's a lot of ways to look at this parable. And, and really, there's, there's a lot of perspectives here. For instance, what if you were one of the disciples listening to Jesus tell this parable in the midst of the religious leaders? You'd be excited. You'd be like, Jesus is speaking truth to power. And what an amazing moment it must have been for them to to think, oh, Jesus is about to, to, is is rejecting the religious leaders. He's the Messiah. He just came into town. He just had a parade. It must be the moment where he will begin to take over. And I wonder if the disciples were thinking, what if we're in those seats that the religious leaders are in now? What if we have that sort of honor and place of privilege? It's easy to hear this story from the religious leader's perspective as well. I shouldn't say easy, should I? It's difficult to hear Jesus's parable about how they have fallen way short and will ultimately be rejected. Sometimes it's hard to hear different pieces of scripture that talk about God's judgment and the finality of things. And this is one of those. But if we listen really close to this parable, There's a third perspective, and that is God's perspective. I want us to, well, just to sit in just for a minute. For God's perspective is is unique in this one, and it is really important. 
Jesus tells this story about a vineyard owner. And and he slows the story down a lot at the beginning and gives us a lot of description. Did you catch it in verse 33? A certain landowner did what? Planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. This landowner did everything possible to make sure that there was a place that was prepared that could be provi- uh, uh, be providing for them and providing for others. He, he completed it. He not only planted the vineyard, but he put a wall around it to make sure it was safe and secure. He dug a press in the middle of it so that it would be there for when the grapes would be harvested that they could immediately begin to enjoy the abundance. And the final thing he does, he, he puts a watchtower so that someone might be there looking for the enemies to come and to be forewarned and that this would be a really safe place for a group of people to be a part of something that produces abundance. And, and then the, the landowner goes a little bit farther, says, I've, I've done all this, I've prepared it all, it is ready to go. And now I want people to enjoy it. I, I want people to come and, and, and to be in this vineyard and, and work it and to enjoy and delight in the abundance. And so he leases it out. Jesus continues to tell this parable that he leases it out. And and when the harvest has come, the landowner sends back three of his servants to collect what is rightfully his. The whole thing was his to begin with, right? And he's just coming back to, to collect a portion of what has been harvested as would only be expected. He is the owner. He has leased this vineyard he is due a portion. But what happens when these three employees of the landowner come to this vineyard to collect what is rightfully his? One was beaten, one was stoned, and one was killed. Just the audacity of this group of people who have been completely uh, cared for And given the space, what does the landowner do? I'm not sure about you, but at this point, I I would be a little leery. And and I'd be uh, looking for a different way. But not this landowner. He, He sends more of his employees back to collect what is rightfully his. And what happens to this group? The second group that he sends? They're all killed. They're all pushed away. Now, at this point, I would think that enough is enough, but not for this landowner. This landowner says, I'm going to send my son. Surely they'll respect my son. Surely my son can come and and sort of resolve all this. Surely it will be okay to send him. And those tenants who were in that vineyard that had been planted by this owner and had been developed and had been given to them, they look at the sun coming and they have a grand idea. If we kill him, the whole thing's ours. We will rightfully inherit this. And that's exactly what they did. You see... This isn't a story about God rejecting humanity or God rejecting religious leaders or God rejecting anyone. Often God gets a really bad rap about that. This story is a clear and compelling and compassionate story about a God who has been rejected, a God who is willing to, to be rejected because he loves so much. A God who is not about to give up. A God who continues to offer second and third and fourth chances. A God who is willing to give of himself. What kind, what kind of God who would do all of this 
plant this place, provide all that is necessary for life and life abundant, what sort of God would be willing to be rejected? It's the kind of God who would send his son who while sharing a meal on the last night with those closest to him took a loaf of bread and he broke the bread. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. What kind of God is willing to be rejected and love so much to give second and third and fourth chances? It's a God who sends his son who during that same meal took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks to the Father in heaven and then he turned to those that were in his midst that include those who would doubt him, those who would deny him, and those who would betray him. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus concludes this parable by quoting scripture to the religious leaders. He says, didn't you ever read this? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. Jesus goes on to say that this cornerstone is offered to us to build our lives upon a strong foundation which will never be washed away, a place that will be firm and a and, and foundation that we can build and be secure and have hope eternal. He said, but the choice is yours. And if you don't decide to build upon this cornerstone, this firm foundation, it still exists. And just because you reject it does not make it any less true. And what will end up happening is rather than building your house upon the firm foundation, you'll trip over it. You'll be crushed under the weight of it. This isn't God's intent or doing. It is ours. You see, God is not in the business of rejecting us. But quite often, we find ourselves rejecting God. You see, we have a choice. We can either choose a life of sacrifice or we can get caught under the weight of selfishness. Jesus showed this all throughout his life. He taught this. We can either choose an abundant life of giving to others, or we can trip over the scarcity of always taking. We can either choose a life based on forgiveness, or we can live under the mounting pressure of bitterness. We can build our lives upon the firm foundation of reconciliation, or we can build upon the quicksand of divisiveness. It is truly our choice. We can choose to live in love, or we can become consumed by fear. Today is not a sermon about five steps towards happiness. It is not a, a, a um, some sort of, here's the major principle. Today is an invitation. It is an invitation for all of us to build our lives upon the firm foundation of the one who is willing to give us second and third and fourth and fifth and so on chances. A God who, who wants to scoop us up and to provide for us abundantly. A God who is willing to, re 
willing to be rejected so that we might have the chance to open our lives and experience the fullness of his life, his love. This morning, we come to the table that has been prepared for us. For 2,000 years, Christians have been assembling around this meal that has been prepared and given to us. And as Wesleyans, we, we believe it is the very place where heaven and earth collide and grace is given, second chances are given, courage, forgiveness, reconciliation, they're all available through God's grace, which is mediated through this time and through these elements. So I'll invite you now. All who love God, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with their neighbor, are invited to this place, this table that has been set by God's Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious Lord, we ask for your forgiveness to be poured upon us, for we admit that we have sinned against you in what we have done, what we have thought, and what we have said. We have also sinned against you and what we have left undone. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We humbly ask that through your Son, our Savior, your forgiveness might restore us so that we might be free to joyfully obey you all the days of our lives. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. One of the great joys of being in community with one another is being able to pray with and for each other. We would love to know how to do that for you. If you wouldn't mind letting us know, uh, either by responding back to the text service, if you're a part of that, or following that link that's in the comments or on our website, or um, if it's easier for you to give us a call or send us an email, we would love to know how we can be praying for you. And as we journey into a time of prayer together, I invite you to prepare your hearts. Holy God, we come humbly before you now, asking that you might fill us to the brim with your love, your wisdom, with your way, Lord. You are almighty and everlasting, the one who was, is, and is to come. Might we remember this each new morning. May you be the ruler of all the days of our lives, that we might also be obedient and faithful to your call, to your love. Merciful God, where we fail, you make new. You redeem and transform. When we make a mess of things and come before you in humble repentance, you find ways to reveal your goodness to us and to others. You are so faithful. Thank you, Lord. On this World Communion Sunday, as those around this globe partake in the feast your Son invites all to you, may we remember the world and the sacrifice Jesus did for all not just in this city, not just in this state or nation, but around this very earth. In remembering the world, our prayers go to our brothers and sisters globally who cry out for peace, for comfort, for your mercy to rain down, who are also finding ways to praise you and glorify your name, for you are good indeed, even when we don't quite understand, even in the midst of our circumstances, your goodness reigns. In your goodness, we are united near and far, remembering especially today to partake globally in this feast. What a beautiful testament to the breadth of your church, O oh God. We ask that you would be made known in the lives of those who have yet to experience you and your grace, 
Help us to be active participants in your plan of welcoming home all your children, especially when we might be otherwise too afraid to do so. Make us bold for you, God, for you are bold for us indeed. We pray for our city and our nation, especially for our president, Donald Trump, and his wife, Melania, and all those experiencing the effects of COVID-19. Lord, you know every detail and every need. You hold closely all those who are suffering with COVID in your loving care. And we bring them now to you knowing the great need for our intercession and the great need for your healing. So we pray now, we pray for your healing and your comfort and your peace for those who are affected. We pray for strength, knowing that this is a stressful time, especially for our White House. God, we also take the time to look a little closer and know that you are also near to our own hearts. In our times of hurt and trial and pain and sadness and wandering and searching and also in our celebrating and in times of peace. We thank you for being an ever-present gift of grace, peace, and comfort, that we have but to wait for your grace to intercede on our behalf. We thank you, God of wonder, God of love, God of awe. As we journey to the table together now and later today, would you prepare us for this feast that you have laid out for each of us to partake in, that we would be made known to the work you have already begun in us, and that we might be ready to join you in this work, anticipating the call to love well. We pray this now, believing in that love, knowing that you are working and joining you here at the table, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to his Father in heaven, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in thanksgiving and praise as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you pray with me? Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory. And we feast together with people from every tribe and nation at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as we have shared earlier, um, the service doesn't end now. The elements have been consecrated, and we look forward to seeing you, whether you're driving through to pick the elements up or you're coming here to partake of them. If you drive through or if the elements are delivered to you, please let me encourage you to come back at 5 p.m. as we will come together at the table. joy it has been to be in worship alongside you this morning and if you're visiting with us or you're from out of town or anywhere else and we're just so glad that you're here if you've been a part of this community for years and years we're glad that you're here as well as carol reminded us the service doesn't actually doesn't stop i'm going to give a a a pre-benediction here in just a moment and but the service continues as, until we reassemble tonight at five uh, right here as we will receive the communion elements together. 
I did want to, to, to make mention, many of you probably have read the email and have heard the news that David Cooper has, um, has wrapped up his time with us here at First United Methodist Church in the downtown campus. And I know you will join with me in uh, thanking him for eight years of his service and his life and his love that he has given to us as a congregation. In the days of COVID, it's a little difficult to, to have a goodbye as we would normally uh, do so. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, you have an opportunity to, to reach out to David either directly or if you'd like to send a note or a card to the church office, we'll make sure that we forward them. We are just so thankful for all that uh, he has done and our prayers and our uh, thoughts and everything else that uh, goes with him as he continues uh, to serve God and on his journey. We thought it would be only fitting today for us to conclude this service on this World Communion Sunday with a postlude that David taped here recently. And so I will, in just a moment, invite you uh, to continue in the spirit of worship as he leads us uh, again. And now, I pray that you would know that God loves you so much that there is nothing that you have done that he's not willing to forgive. There is no place you've been he's not willing to receive you back. That sort of God who is willing to be rejected because his love for us is without bounds. May we open our hearts and to receive that love for it will truly change us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.